Hello all, uh, welcome to another video and this is part 7 of Linux for DevOps crash course and in this video I want to talk about some basic networking terminologies and some basic networking commands as well in the later part of the video. So uh, these terms should be known by everyone. It doesn't matter whether you want to become a Linux administrator, a cloud engineer or uh, a DevOps engineer. So these terms are really important for anyone who wants to work in these domains. So let's start the video. The first term is MAC address or media access control address. It comes on layer two of the OSI model, which is a data link layer. If you have not watched my last video on OSI model, uh, the link will be in the description of this video. So you can check that out. All right. So MAC address is the physical address of the networking interface ensures that data sets gets to your destination. So whatever devices you are working with, each device will have its uh, uh, hardware backend and each hardware will have its own address. So that hardware address is called MAC address. Similarly, you have a MAC address, you have uh, IP address as well. IP stands for Internet Protocol. It's a, it, it, it comes on layer 3, which is the network layer of the OSI model. And it is the unique address on the network. Okay, So uh, in case of MAC address, it is the hardware address. But IP address is like a virtual resource that is assigned to each device in the network. And this is the most important address that you will be using to communicate with, with any device. All right, so this is uh, the uh, most important thing when, uh, when it comes to networking, you can say, okay. Then we have subnet, which stands for subnetwork. Uh, it means that suppose you have a big a network IP range and uh, it has lakhs of IP addresses in it, but you have a requirement to use only 400 to 500 IPs. In that case, what you can do is you can divide this big network into small chunks and those chunks that, that you'll be using uh, uh, for your work are called uh, subnets or subnetworks. So uh, dividing a big network into small networks, those small networks are called subnets. Then we have a gateway. So gateway is the connection leading outside of the local network. Okay. So suppose you want to talk to another uh, network in another office from your office. Okay, so that office is on a different network than your network. So you need a gateway to to uh, talk to that office. Okay, so a gateway is the connection or the route which your network has to take to reach the other network. Okay, uh, and uh, we'll see some more details around this in the later part of the video. Then we have a DNS host. Uh, so a DNS stands for a domain name system. It uh, uh, translates host name into IP addresses. The meaning of this is whatever websites you have ever accessed from your browser like facebook.com. Okay. So this, this facebook.com is the DNS name of an IP address in the backend. This means that each uh, website address that you use in your browser has an IP address attached to it. Okay, but since uh, remembering the uh, IP addresses is not an easy task for human beings, we use the DNS names. Okay, so DNS names are easier to remember, but using uh, this DNS uh, system, we are uh, able to resolve those host names into IP addresses in the, in the backend. Okay, so each website that you access has an IP address to which it resolves to. Okay, so that is called DNS host. Then DNS domain is, is a lookup domain for the host. The meaning of this is in terms of in terms of Linux, what will happen? You will have a host name. Uh, let me give you an example. So when you are working in a real-time environment, a real-time setup for an enterprise, you will have uh, these uh, host names and then uh, the DNS, uh, the DNS uh, domain names. Okay. So how will it be? For example, you have a WordPress 
a server or uh, i mean you have a uh, this wordpress application which is hosted on one of the servers okay so the name of the server would be something like this aws dev wordpress so this will be the host name and if that particular server is attached to a domain name the domain name will be something like this dot example dot com so in this case if you see this example dot com is a domain name and this aws d wordpress is the host name okay so the meaning of this is dns name is a is a lookup domain for the host so the lookup domain for the host is example dot com and the host name is aws wordpress dot com okay and this whole thing is called fqdn which stands for fully qualified domain name okay so just remember these small concepts then switches so switches are used to forward uh, the uh, uh, data packets within the internal network okay now let's uh, uh, again take the example of an office suppose you are working in an office and you have uh, three more colleagues working there so you are four in total and and you all are using your own uh, computers to uh, to do your work so those four uh, different computers in an office will be connected to a single network within that office okay so if you have to uh, download something from another computer or uh, i mean if you have to send uh, send some data packets to to another computer in that case you can use a switch so switch is used to forward packets within the internal network only so now uh, for example you want to download something from internet so internet is uh, not part of your internal office network it is part of another network so in that case switches will not work okay in that case you have to use a router so routers are used to forward packets between networks and it is a layer 3 network device and the switches are used to forward packets within the internal network okay we are going to see uh, a basic uh, network diagram to show the details of switches and routers all right then a tcp and udp so tcp stands for transmission control protocol and udp stand for user datagram protocol it is a, it is a layer 4 i mean it, it it comes on layer 4 of the osi model which is the transport layer and uh, tcp and udp are called transport protocols which means they are used to to uh, i mean carry the data packets from source to destination so this is like the medium to send your data packets from one computer to the other so that's why these are called uh, the transport protocols so a tcp is reliable and, and connection oriented which means that whatever data you are sending using tcp the i mean if the data has been received successfully then one uh, feedback will be sent back that the data has been received okay like an uh, acknowledgement of the work that uh, that the work has been completed successfully so that is why it is reliable and it is called connection oriented but in case of udp it is connectionless so when you use a udp to to uh, transport a data packets from uh, a source to destination in that case the destination is, is not going to send any confirmation back to the source that the data was received or not so that is why it is called connectionless okay and i and i was once asked in the interview if dns uses a tcp or udp so just remember dns uses udp and not tcp okay then another uh, important the protocol is icmp which is used to test connectivity okay so uh, when we think about this command called ping command which is used to test connectivity to a server or to a, a remote location so it uses icmp protocol just remember this okay uh, so this is another one more important question that you may be asked that how to test connectivity to a location from a linux server you have to use the ping uh, the ping command and this ping command using uh, is uses i mean uh, the ping command uses icmp protocol just remember this okay then another concept is sockets in linux which is used to establish uh, communication between two processes so socket is like uh, <clears throat> like 
there's one a process which wants to talk to another process okay so there will be uh, one communication channel which will be established between the two processes and now they can uh, send data between each other so this communication channel is called socket okay that's all in this slide the next slide <clears throat> ipv4 address now uh, when we talk about ip addresses so there are two versions of it okay v4 and v6 okay here i'm uh, i mean I, i'm uh, only going to cover ip v4 address and not v6 because i haven't used v6 myself ever and i don't have much knowledge about it as well frankly speaking but i can speak about ip v4 addresses so here i just want to um, give you a very basic idea a very uh, i mean high level overview of what is an ip v4 address so it is the address of your device on, on its network which we've already spoken about and this is the structure of an ip address so if you see this is a typical ip address 192.168.101.100 okay so it is uh, i mean when we talk about this address in binary bits so it is a 32 bit address okay divided into uh, uh, 8 bits in each octet so this particular section is called one octet then this is second octet third and fourth octet so there are four octets of an ipv4 address okay and uh, in terms of binary bits it is of 8 bits this one octet is of 8 bits okay then the value of these octets will always vary from 0 to 255 always okay so it, it uh, it cannot go into a minus and uh, it it cannot go beyond 255 always okay for all the octets all right so this is about ipv4 address a very high level overview only if i if i get enough time i'm going to cover some additional details as well in some other video then uh, let's see a very basic network topology that you'll be seeing uh, so suppose uh, once again, uh, 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 let's take an example of one of the offices in which you work. So suppose you are working in an office and you have three computers there in the office. Okay. And uh, whenever there's a requirement from this, this computer to send data to this computer, in that case, as I spoke about, you can use a switch. Okay. A switch is used to uh, transfer data packets within an internal network. So since these three computers are inside an office, they must be using uh, some local network, which is also called LAN, local area network. So I mean, when you want to uh, send the data packets within a local network or a local area network, in that case, you can use a switch. So if this computer wants to talk to this computer, it can go through switch. If this computer wants to talk to this computer, it can go through this switch and then this switch to this switch and then uh, vice versa as well. If this computer wants to talk to this, it can go via this way or it can go via this way to this particular, uh, this particular computer. Now, if any of these three computers wants to download something from internet, so internet is outside of the internal network within the office. In that case, they have to use a default gateway. Okay. So if, so if for example, uh, this computer wants to download something from internet, which is outside of the internal network. In that case, the switch is not going to work. Okay. But if you have a, a router, then uh, this switch is, is, is going to send the uh, data to the router. Okay. And this is called a default gateway, the gateway to other, other network, basically. Okay. So whenever there's a requirement like that, you very want to uh, go to another network, you have to go through a default gateway. Okay. And the default gateway is uh, used by the router to uh, send the, the data packets to the outside network. In this case, the, the traffic will flow from here to here then from here to the default gateway and from there to the router and then uh, router will send it to the internet. Okay. So this is the difference between router and a switch. Now let's see some Linux networking commands. Uh, so I'm logged into my, uh, 
Red Hat Enterprise Linux version 9 machine and uh, let's see some basic commands. So the first command is IP space ADDR. IP space ADDR. So uh, there's uh, one command which was if, if config which I used to use a lot in the past but now with this version 9 this command has become obsolete so this ip addr is the replacement of if config okay so if if i just use this command with no flags with nothing you can see there are some information related to uh, networks uh, which which is shown on the output okay so so, so uh, 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 let's talk about it so lo which stands for the loopback interface Okay, this interface will always have the IP of 127.0.0.1 and it refers to the local host, which means the local host IP of this Linux server. Okay. Then you have ETH0. Okay. So on a Red Hat a Linux system, your network interfaces, the main network interfaces which holds your IP address will be represented as ETH0, ETH1 and so on, okay, generally. So if you see here, apart from this LO, there is another interface called ETH0. It is an, a network interface, okay. And if you see here, INET, which stands for IP address, okay. So the IP address of this ETH0 interface is 172.31.26.63, which is also the IP address of your Linux system, okay. And this is the IPv6, okay which we don't use much okay and so uh, uh, this is ipv4 and this is ipv6 okay similarly this is the hardware address okay this link either means this is the hardware address the mac address you can say of this linux system all right the next command is nmcli nmcli so this again um, shows you the same uh, uh, information but in a different format you can say. So I mean, once again you can see the IPv4 uh, address, you can see the um, name of the interface, then you can see the, the loopback interface, its, its IP address and so on. Okay, So this is just one more command to see the uh, similar type of details. Then NMCLI device show will give you some additional information related to your uh, networking interfaces. Okay, you can say, you can see here, you also get to see IP4 gateway. So this is the default gateway, okay, of this Linux server, which is 172.31.16.1, okay. And then uh, this is the domain name, ec2.internal, as I mentioned, ec2.internal is the default uh, domain name on an AWS EC2 instance. Okay, then this is the IPv6 address. Okay, then uh, you also see uh, other information like this uh, loopback address is there. So this is the uh, the loopback interface, and this is the internet address of the loopback interface. Okay. Then IP route show. Let me clear the screen. IP route or some or you can call it root show. Now here if you see it shows you the default gateway. So this is the default gateway. So if you if you if you, if you just want to see the information related to, to a default gateway, you can use this command IP route show. Okay. So if this if the if, uh, the network the traffic has to go out of the local network, it has to use this gateway. This is the default gateway, okay? Then another important file, which is slash etc slash services, it's, it's going to show you the list of well-known ports, okay? So remember one thing, for standard services, or I mean, for the most important services in Linux, each service has a standard port which it uses, okay? So to see the, the list of all those standard ports, there's a file which stores that information, which is this file. So just copy this command, which is used to cat the contents, cat the contents of this file, cat slash etc services. It's going to show you the list of all the standard ports that are used, okay? 
So this is a long list. Next is Systems ETL Status Network Manager. So this is the name of the service for your uh, network on a Linux system using Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Okay. So System CTL Status Network Manager. So if your uh, uh, network is down on the Linux system, you can check the status of this service. It should be active running. Okay. So this is the main network service. Okay. On a Linux system using Red Hat uh, operating system. Okay. It's called a network manager. Okay. So just ensure that this active is all uh, this uh, uh, service is always active running at all times. Then we will talk about SS, which is which stands for socket statistics. So we spoke about the sockets in our first PPT. So a socket in Linux is used to establish communication between two processes. Okay, so now we will see it in real. Command is actually hyphen ta. So SS space hyphen four which stands for IPv4 because I just want to see the details related to IPv4 and not IPv6. So I'm using this flag space hyphen four, then space hyphen T and A. So T stands for all the TCP sockets. Okay. And A stands for all. If I run this command, I can see there's a socket formed between this, uh, this uh, uh, IP address and a port combination to this IP address to port combination. So if you see here, I'm logged in to, to, to this SH, I mean, uh, to this Linux machine from my laptop, okay, using this client app called Mobile Xterm. So this, if you see ESTAB, it's, it stands for established, okay. So here, what, I, what I'm seeing is I have an SSH a connection that is established from this machine to this machine. Okay. So this is the IP address of my laptop and this is the port to which this uh, service is attached to. Okay. If I check my IP address, what is my IP? So you can see my IP address is Strange. I don't see my IPv4 address for some reason. Okay, now it's come. Uh, it has come up. So if you see here, 106.219.122.6. Okay, so this is the IP address of my laptop. So this particular result, this particular output shows that there's an SSH connection established between this server on which I'm logged in to this server. Okay, so this is the socket. So uh, this is what a socket is. So there's a connection that is established from this to this. Okay. So this is called a socket and SS stands for socket statistics. Then there are two commands that I want to show you, which is NS lookup. So yeah. whenever you see an error like this, NS lookup, I mean, you, you run a command and you see a command not found. This generally means the package or the software that has this command is not installed on your machine. Okay. So generally it means that you have to install an additional software package to get this command to work on your CLI. So and let's look up and there's another command called dig. So both command are not found. So there's a package called bind hyphen utils that you have to install to get these two commands. So you can just copy and paste this command. There's some issues. So I'll just type this command DNF install bind hyphen utils space hyphen y 
So when I install this package, now if I run those commands and let's look up, it will work. Okay, so it's working. So nslookup is a command that is used to find the uh, I mean IP address of a domain of a domain name or of, a, of an FQDN. Okay, for example, I want to see the IP address of google.com. Okay, so I'll just run nslookup space name of the FQDN fully qualified domain name or the website name of which I want to check the IP address of. And you can see right now this google.com is using these IP addresses. Okay, so these are the IP addresses. All right, and similarly, there's another command called dig command. Dig, if you use dig google.com, Once again, you can see uh, the IP addresses. Okay, so the question is, I want to find the, the IP addresses of Google.com. So uh, just remember, host name to IP address record is called an A record. That's why it says A. Okay, Internet record A, which means I want to see the A records. Okay, so Google.com has an A record of this, 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 this. So there are six IP addresses which refers to google.com. So this is what I uh, I want, I mean, I spoke about when I spoke about DNS, okay, domain name system. It means that each website or FQDN has an IP address in the backend, okay? And this is the way to check the IP addresses of a host name or of a FQDN, fully qualified domain name, okay? So uh, that's all I wanted to cover in this video. I hope you liked my video. If you did, please hit that like button and uh, share this video with others and uh, subscribe to my channel. All right, I'm going to end the video now and I'm going to see you in the next one.